Kevin Chaos, the Autistic Wizard. Today we're going to talk about how to be happy. Sort of spontaneous pre t video, if you will. Now, I see a lot of you people. Yes, you people. No, I see a lot of you uh, rehearsing how to be unhappy. And that kind of, uh, as someone that was once guilty of that, kind of spawned the idea to create this video. So, today we're going to discuss how to be happy by discussing the things you're doing to be unhappy and what we can change about that. So, the first, this makes me happy, but I don't necessarily recommend it. Caffeine is one of those things. Caffeine and nicotine, okay, make you agitated. Whether you realize it or not, masked in other glorious chemicals, getting a good rush from the metabolism boost or whatever, feeling good, right? Like a pill head, no offense to any of you out there, um, you don't exactly notice that you're actually having mood swings necessarily. You're focused on the part of the whole, you know? So... One of the things that, basically, if something elevates you, it's crashing another portion of you. The brain works with something called neuroplasticity, which means to any area that you're adding, something else is being subtracted from. You can think of it as a bunch of cups being in your mind. These cups are different quadrants of your mind. And whenever you, these cups only have like a finite amount of water. Okay? And whenever you pour into one area of the mind... It has to come from somewhere. So it subtracts from the other area of the mind. Okay? So, stimulants seem to make people happy, but do they? Something to consider. Quite similarly, alcohol. Is alcohol really making you happy? In addition to all the damage it's doing to the body? Alcohol is actually a depressant. It means it lowers you down. Again, in similar ways, it might have masking symptoms to where you don't necessarily notice. But much like the cigarette, notice how you need to continue to be able to keep it going. Do we ever learn what it's doing for us, though? So I'd recommend, as a spiritualist, as a meditator, is paying attention to the chemical shifts in your mind. Paying attention to change, right? And then trying to replicate that change without it, over time. And there's a good experiment you can do. Say you're a pot smoker, right? Nothing wrong with that, necessarily. Again, it comes with its pros and cons, which, if I recall, I'll discuss next. But first, I'm going to give you a method. So I'd like for you to try this out there at home. The power of the mind is absolutely incredible. Let's say... Uh, uh, you smoked a joint to make this story really easy, or blunt, right? Walking down the street with some friends, they're walking side by side to you, or whatever, you're walking down the street, you're smoking that joint, or that blunt, and you're passing along, holding your breath a little bit, and waiting for it to come back along, and keeping up the conversation. Here's the experiment, so that's the memory, right? And you have a similar one. Pick one that you can very vividly recall. Okay, of a time you felt really, really good with some kind of assistance in a substance, right? Satan teaches us, just to use words and stuff, but Satan teaches us to be careful of drugs and tools and stuff that they become vices and make a slave out of the person that could otherwise be a master of themselves. You shouldn't need this or anything else to be the only way that you can trigger that. This chemistry is yours, buddy. We're going to learn how to manipulate it. So remember a good time that you got good and high or whatever. <laughs> and for me, I'll use that memory of walking around smoking with a friend. Now let's say you're the one that rolled the joint. What you're going to want to do for this experiment is remember through your five senses. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember through your five senses everything that you can about the, the thing. So here's, here's the thing. Your mind doesn't know. The difference between reality and fantasy, it truly doesn't. It doesn't. If you show a person a picture of an apple, 
and hook them up to like Marion measuring equipment, the same parts of their brain light up that would be eating the apple, taking a bite, as just looking at it. Your brain really, it doesn't do what's smart, it does what's familiar. It travels down things known as neuropathways, that's connections, branches, if you will, of the brain. And it takes the shortest and most commonly traveled path. This is why fake it till you make it is an expression. Because This is why mantras, repeating things over and over are a thing. Why self-programming takes time. Because you're overriding over program, other programs. And telling the brain, well now we're traveling down this path so much, this is the way we're going to go and do this stuff. So remember with your five senses, and you can change the drug or the tool if you'd like, what it felt like to get good and high on marijuana. Maybe you rolled it yourself. Remember what it smelled like. As you brought that bag up to your face. Remember what it felt like as you broke up the bud. If you broke it up by hand. Or how sticky it was as you put it into the grinder. If you used a grinder. Repeat all of this. While you relive the fantasy. Okay. Roll up that imaginary joint. Nice, right? <laughs> then, do relive the memory. Smoke it. Hold your breath like you would have in the memory. And as I continue to talk to you, you know, and wait for the joint to come back around the circle. Take a next hit and continue. What will happen, and it's easier for some than others, but more people than not that I've given this experiment to have found great success, is your brain gets confused. It's like, wait a minute. When I'm normally doing this, what else am I doing? Oh, I'm releasing dopamine, that feel-good chemical. So we're going to release some dopamine, just like we did in the memory. And you're going to start to feel a little better, a little chipper, a little more up, you know? So that's something. Now we'll talk about the, uh, the positive and negative side effects of weed, as we uh, obviously make some progress here. Because it's very important that we learn from the patterns of our life, that we look back at what we're doing now, what we've done then, what we're about to do, which most people aren't going to consider. They just behave autonomously on reflex. We're very reflexive creatures. We're very pattern-oriented creatures. Okay? So the pros of weed. For people who are dopamine deficient, helps them secrete more dopamine. Mood stabilization. Pain management. Right? A sleep aid. Fighting cancer growth. These things have been shown to be very beneficial. Side effects that should be equally accountable for if you're looking to be happy with anything and everything you do every day in your life. Memory loss. Dopamine also is the, the reward system of the brain. So if you're smoking a joint or whatever, you're smoking pot in any form, you're telling the brain, I'm okay with repeating this pattern. So using it as a stress relief isn't necessarily good unless you're also giving yourself a dose of some positivity at the same time, a dose of meditating on what I'm going to do differently, talking to yourself about the new patterns you're going to implement, watching some kind of video that might motivate you to a positive end. Not necessarily me. Because dopamine tells the brain, basically, check. So let's say uh, maybe you smoked after you masturbated. You're more likely to relate and anchor to connect those neuropathways. You're going to connect those parts of the brain over time, and your brain's going to be waiting for that fix, like a dog waiting for a treat, expecting it. After doing a certain task, after you've done these things before, so do you. Just because we communicate better don't mean that function-wise we're very different from animals. So, it's very important to note what dopamine does to the brain. So we discussed memory loss. What good is living in the moment, <laughs> you know, smoking, having a good time, if you're just going to forget it anyway? Other things that we do that make us very unhappy, potentially, Facebook, social media. These things take over our lives. There's a systematic algorithm. Computers are smart. They're programmers. Half as smart. 
No, there's an old uh, saying uh, that machines are only as smart as the people who designed them. So put that in your smart technology pipe and smoke it. <laughs> um, so we spend so much of our time, because so much of the world is interconnected into this, online. We have ads that read information about our computers and target us with very specific information. The way that Facebook's algorithms and YouTube's algorithms work. It sees you like or comment on one thing and it suggests and tries to suck you into the matrix and pull you in. <laughs> you know, there's a Christian expression, hear no, see no, speak no evil, but that's not what a lot of us do. Instead, we see more, hear more, speak more evil, and we speak evil at evil too. We don't even like just... Learn from the fact, oh, we don't like that you shit on me. I'm going to shit back on you for shitting on me. It's, <laughs> we're really smart. Not really. <laughs> so you ingest these stories. And there's a saying in yoga that says, we are the sum of the many stories that we tell ourselves. And another saying in yoga, what we do on a daily basis defines us. Remember those neural pathways. This is the stuff that you're rehearsing. When you hear like a gay kid goes home and kills himself, the bully isn't at the home with him anymore. And that's not necessarily the problem. That's a problem, don't get me wrong. But a bigger problem is that instead of remembering who we are, any kind of person, doesn't matter. Instead of remembering who we are, what we're doing instead is we're rehearsing what we picked up from that bully. All the negative bullshit that they said. All the, you'll never be this that mommy said. You'll never be that that daddy said. You're so incapable, yada, yada. <laughs> so this, this, is, uh, this is why it's important to meditate, pray, or whatever your particular practice is, to create positive affirmations, to redirect and reprogram your mind for success, for happiness. Because right now, as we speak, I'm programming you in a way with hopefully some good ideas. But as you browse these websites, as you do these activities, as you scroll your Facebook, your subconscious mind is being bombarded even as you flip past it. Your subconscious grabbed and recorded that image. And all of this stuff is being stored in the back of the brain and influencing your emotions and your decisions. And a lot of it is negative. There's a lot on religion, a lot on the religions against those religions, right? There's a lot on, uh, there's even trolls. Trolling is a thing where people just pick just because they can, because they feel safe at home behind the keyboard. Okay? So these are the stories that we tell ourselves. Obviously, the see, no, hear, no, speak, no, evil rule applies a little bit. Spend less time engaged in activities that you legitimately don't enjoy. I, Kevin Chaos, like to say, and I've said this since fifth grade, if you don't like what's on, Change the channel. <laughs> it's interesting that Wiccans use that expression channeling as well. Change the channel. Because what you're rehearsing every day is someone else's bad ideas. And clearly they're not happy and they don't know what's good for you because they're making sure to let you know what's wrong with you. They're not telling you of their delight. They're not showing in their character and in their actions how awesome their shit is how good of a life they're having, how happy they legitimately are. They're actually showing the opposite. How is it that their way is superior, their ideas are superior, when all they're showing is how discontent they are, how unhappy they are? And we tune into this, and we do it with the news, which I call the Fear Network, right? To look for death and despair and worry and sickness and disease and fear. Fear. And so that's what goes on in our mind. So there's a song, uh, I forget who sung it, I'll leave a reference later. It goes, It's always something before the late night. Around the corner, there's always something waiting for you. And that's kind of what we've learned to do. We're literally rehearsing, literally tuning into, long after the bully leaves, long after the news is over, long after events have ended, we've downloaded this information and we're pulling it up again, ruining our good time. So one of the secrets to happiness is literally learning to tune your own radio station into shit that you like. And it seems evil in a way. We're, we're very conditioned in society what a friend means. As someone with Asperger's, I don't subscribe as much to the traditional labeling, to words. Social, there's a social barrier between me and certain people. And I think it's a good thing. But point is, we're conditioned to accept bad, repetitious behavior. 
oh, he's my friend, so I have to accept this and I have to keep doing this. Oh, this is my family member or my loved one, so I need to continue to repeat this stuff or else I'm the bad person. And you're not really. Isn't it weird that you're the bad person whenever you take care of yourself? When you walk away, if someone else is being a belligerent asshole, you're a bad guy. Because you walked away, or you're a pussy, or you couldn't handle it, or no, 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 that's not necessarily the case. But you, you're like, Psh. you know, like, what? if someone is screaming at you, you have so many options to say, right? Fuck you! I don't know. Yeah, well, fuck you too, motherfucker! That's not going to help anybody. It might help you temporarily feel better because you shared some pain. You gave them back a little bit of their, their own bullshit, right? But it's not going to fucking help you. You know, turn that volume down. Walk the fuck on. Do your own thing. Because i got to tell you, and I know you see the happiness and the joy in me. <laughs> there is a whole different kind of kick and amazement you can get at the fact that you didn't tune in. Oh, and they're going to call you names and they're going to make up stuff and they're going to try to do whatever they can to bring you down to their level. So that they can relate to what they're projecting upon you. They're going to try. They might bring up your past. It doesn't matter. You can try to please this person, but is this person trying to please you? You can try to be a friend to this person, but is this person trying to be a friend to you? And then does walking away really mean that you're a bad person? Or that you don't care? Not at all. It means that you're making an intelligent decision. You know, imagine, imagine a monk, you know, who rarely, if at all, talks. At all. Because it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Do you love is acknowledged and known. You can see it in the actions. You can see it in the consideration and the choices people make. And so is hate. So is, like, like pure hate. Infatuation with disgust. And I'd rather not discuss it personally. So we need to change some of our habits. Social media is death for you. And I, I, I seem like an asshole probably in this, but I get on social media for the most part long enough to post my ideas and then leave it used to be called myspace now it's called facebook right it's my diary you can tune in and read to it if you want to i'm sharing a lot of times my shit's contradicting anyway because i just have fun with the reactions that i get but this is my story and you can choose to read my story or not is how it's supposed to work click that bell icon click that like that no 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 no, no. If it helps you, take it in, rehearse that good idea, carry it on, add it on into your life, into your programming of things to benefit you. If it doesn't, whoosh, go on to the next thing. Do you think that it helps to have a Facebook argument? Aww. This video will have to continue later. That was my mother, and I had to take that. Sorry. I might not pick up in the exact same spot that I left off, but I'll do my best. We're mainly talking about Facebook, social media, opting in or tuning out, right? Okay, so we have a lot of habits like that. Here's some more stuff on how to be happy, legitimately happy. So you have caffeine. Caffeine changes your mood. It does. B vitamins, they change your mood. Anything that's fucking with your metabolism or your uh, circadian rhythm, which is the 12 on, 12 off, light and, and darkness, day and night sleep cycle, to be simple. Um... All these things, so you need to recognize the patterns in your life and you look back and, and make the connections. When something, let's say you got upset today. Say you're upset watching this video. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> but uh, you should be sitting there and be like, damn, what did he say? Why do I feel? How did I? When did I? And drawing the connection and try to do this every time that you feel or, or, or something, that you experience something, lest we be doomed to repeat it. Right? History who repeats itself as we learn from it. So, excuse me, your diet. If you're eating a bunch of freaking acidic foods, you're going to have a bad time. You might temporarily have a good time, but not to be too graphic here, but let's say you ate an entire pizza or several pizzas to yourself, right? And it felt really good and tasted real good on the way in, but later on on the way out. What happened? Did we learn from this? How can we not do this again? Why am I feeling bad? Right? This is the kind of stuff we need to do, but instead we're rehearsing all of the things that we don't enjoy. We spend time around people that we don't enjoy. 
They use words we don't like. And we can learn to amuse ourselves to the words. It's a little easier said than done. But we can learn to amuse our, to learn to amuse ourselves from that kind of behavior. But ultimately, if we are the company we keep, something else I say a lot of the time. We're the company we keep. So if we're spending time around misery, much like someone's around you saying a word you never say all the time and it leaks into your vocabulary, well, we're symbiotic creatures, humans. So sort of the negative thoughts, influences, hatreds, judgments, prejudice, whatever, leak into you just a little bit. If only for you to think about, which is enough to have you not have a good time. So how to be happy? Chance the channel. Hey, maybe I'll add a little static effect every time I do that. <laughs> if you want to be happy, you can't spend time around people that are ultimately going to imprison you in their unhappiness. There was an expression once that said, You may want to save the drowning man, but the drowning man often trying to save him will only precipitate your own disaster. I mean, imagine this, okay? Let's say someone wanted to die, they're drowning. You don't know that yet, right? You go out and paddle out to try to save their life. Okay? You manage struggling. when it got, I mean, it's so hard to get them back to shore, but you manage to get them back to shore, and what's the very next thing he does? Paddles right back out. Do you try to save him again? Do you keep trying to do this until you drown? People are often like a sickness. People are like a virus. They will infect you with who they are, with what they will do. And ultimately, you cannot save them just because you wish to. You cannot have good things for them just because you'd like to have good things for them. And it's very important and very difficult for all of us, heart bleeds and feelers, to not put yourself first. Because you hear that a lot, but no one's going to, no, no one just buys into that. Except for people that are already like that. So it's not the good advice. But... You learn to protect yourself. You learn to make wiser decisions. You learn to determine what things cost you as you make those decisions. Is there any reimbursement? And this doesn't necessarily about money, and it doesn't mean to make all your decisions need some kind of payment or something coming back your way. But if you're only sacrificing for no gain, for no reward, for no pleasure, for no balance, no peace, then you're just on a downhill slide to lose. Let's say... I don't even have my wallet on me. There it is. Okay, let's say uh, we hang out a lot and I buy us food. We don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money personally. <laughs> but uh, every time we hang out, I find myself spending money on you. Right? Okay, now you didn't ask me for this. So not only do I not have to do it, but uh, it's the nice thing to do, right? Consider others. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Um, you know, since we're both in the situation together, and it is a smart decision I'm on him, I'm going to consider you and consider your needs because we're us right now. We're not just me and you. We're us right now in this situation together, on this adventure together, on this outing or what have you together. But if every time that we hang out, I'm paying for your food, that's fine. Money isn't a thing, even if you don't have a lot of it. But it's it's costing me. I'm growing smaller and if at the same time you decide to share nothing but pain talk about all these other people that hurt you not even be able to enjoy the food that i'm offering you but talk about all this other stuff it's not happening right now it's not happening in this room it's not happening between us but your focus is so toxic that instead of seeing the the love that we could have right now the fun should you tune into it and desire it right now you're so focused on tuning into the darkness, tuning into that negative station. And so you project it. And it only takes one little word wrong. It might not even be wrong. But because your focus, paradigm shifts people talk about, you know, your focus is looking for, for those who knock, the door will be open to, to them. For those who seek, they will find. Does not only apply to good things. It applies to all things. If you're looking for a needle in a haystack, well, you might not find that one. You might, though. Ow! You know? <laughs> if you're looking for the pain, yin-yang. Have you ever seen yin-yang? Oh, I, I can't wait till I get my dry erase board to go here. A yin-yang, also called the peace symbol, 
It's not exactly though. The circle, right, with the little curve VS, half the circle is filled with white, with a black dot. Half the circle is filled with black, with a white dot. Now the word yin yang is actually Chinese, and it means female male, but it ultimately represents balance. It represents the good within the bad, and the bad within the good, all equaling one whole. But if you're choosing to only focus on half of the picture, you cannot see the whole. And if you look for it hard enough, like a schizophrenic tying in seemingly unconnected threads into everything to fit their narrative and their perception, you will make that happen. I'll give you a parable of my own. And I give this to people sometimes that need a, a new perspective. So you and I are walking. And we're walking, and we're walking. Wow, man, everything's amazing. Say we're walking through a park. There's some gorgeous trees, man. It's, wow, wow, wow. Just imagine how long it took for this tree to grow. Look how fat that chunk is. Fat boy, she's so fat. I'm playing. Look how fat that chunk Look how tall. It's just like a skyscraper tall. Look at this amazement. Maybe it's too simple for you. Maybe you can't see that amazement, right? All oh, the birds chirping and singing. Just, just beauty and harmony everywhere, all the time, whether you realize it or not. When you're angry, you're in harmony with anger. Right now, you and anger are in balance. You are connected to anger. So, I'm walking with you, and I'm looking at all this stuff, and I'm trying to just, just walk with my homie and share a good time. There's flowers, there's animals, there's people. And we're walking past a garden, and there's all this beautiful shit growing. And you, my friend, maybe, <laughs> I'm like, man, wow, look at this. Look at these flowers, man. This is amazing. Hey, did you, have, did you ever see a tree that big, man? And you're like, ugh, there's dog shit on the ground. And like, yeah, yeah, never mind that, homie, but check, hey, check this out, man. Look at those birds. Man, look at that impressive wingspan. That shit is incredible. Can you imagine what it would be like to be a bird, man? Just floating by, man. Like, shit, none of this shit matters. You know what I'm saying? Dude, there's dog shit on the ground. And notice that the point of the story is, no matter how many times I'm trying to redirect your attention to show you all this awesome shit, what you choose to see, what you look for, what you seek and therefore find, is shit. So that's what you get. And you cannot have all of this fucking splendor, all of this awesomeness, until you decide that that shit isn't worth your time. <laughs> it's not worth your time. You need a paradigm shift. You need to make the connection in your mind to realize that your unhappiness is directly related to your shitty focus. Your shitty focus. That's how to be happy. You can argue until you're blue in the face. I like to argue. I love to debate. I think it's great. But that's because I have this immunity to where you can't hurt me in the same way. Because at the end of the day, if your words weren't supportive, and I don't mind if you attack me or if you tell me that something's wrong with my life, even if I'm not ready to hear that yet, I actually very much appreciate being called out. I very much appreciate being told no. I very much appreciate being told fuck you to my face rather than behind my back. I love all of that thing because it might give me awareness when I'm ready to think upon it and take the time to understand what's not coming from my mouth, my brain, and my words, but ultimately meant for me from another individual. It might take me time to get there, and I know the same of you guys. So, I appreciate all of that, but it's going to take some time. What I'm trying to share with the world in that regard, then, is the beauty, the love, the joy. If they want it. If they want evil, I can join them in that domain. I can be a nigger of Nancy. We can talk about our exes and <laughs> everybody in the world that was out there to hurt us. That are over and gone. And I know the pain, the memories, and the emotions. They're all still there, and of course they are, but... It's what you do right now. It's the radio station that you're tuning into that actually matters. Are you going to rehearse over and over and over and mantra like the pagans do to continue to play around with Bible verses? Bad shit? Are you going to focus on that shit on the ground? Or are you going to move on to the next channel 
of something much more entertaining, much more beneficial, much more worth your time. Love isn't always going to be returned to you. It's another thing that makes us unhappy. I was raised by a narcissist for a long, long time. Almost my entire life. It was only a couple of years ago that I stopped. I really wanted that love back. But the person isn't capable of it. Love doesn't mean to them what it might mean to me. And regardless of what I'd like to have, what big dreams I have, what harmony and togetherness I would wish to receive, it doesn't mean that I'm going to get those things. For some people, love is selfish. For some people, it's all about what they get in the process. I've been told there are three types of love. Agape, that's what I have. That is universal love. It's all-encompassing love. It is, uh, to give you an example, you, listener, I love you before I ever knew you. I really do. You have no fucking idea. Why? Because you're you, and that's a pretty fucking cool thing. You're you and not me, and that makes you pretty fucking radical, right? Whatever decisions that you make that I didn't, even indifference, right? You, say, you don't make the same life choices I make. You don't act the same way that I do. You don't talk the same way I do. You got a whole different sexuality. None of that matters. I think it's really cool that you do because for the sun to know what the sun is, it needs the moon to contrast it, which makes the moon pretty fucking significant. It makes the moon pretty important and special. So my agape is I love you before I knew you. And if we get to know each other, I love you while I know you. I continue to love you. While you change, which will undoubtedly happen while I know you, and then should we depart, which may or may not happen due to different decisions we make, whether emotional or intellectual, to move into new chapters, I'm going to love you when you're gone, for whatever you do next. Because you're a pretty cool thing over there. You're, you make a great you. Your you is fucking incredible. And that, that paradigm, that perspective, is going to keep me happy. I could choose to... Hold on to, after you no longer are hurting me, so you punch me in the face. Once the punch is over, it's over. It's over. And I can punch you back, and we can get into a full brawl, and maybe, depending on the scenario, those things could happen. Probably not. But maybe. Depends, really. Are you meaning me harm? Uh, is my life really in danger? Your one hit, did it end your steam? Do you feel better that I ran my mouth and you punched my mouth? Because if that's the case, and it's already over, I'm going to make that decision accordingly. I'm going to see it stupid as what you did, but I'm not going to add into the situation. It's all about how you handle it. It's all about what you're looking for. So don't look for the fucking shit, because you will find it. And instead, look for the fucking things you have in common. I used to preach this a lot in fifth grade. One of the biggest things that separate us is, that's not the way to word it, but we look for what's different. Take the racial issues in America right now. Instead of what's the same, we look for what's different. People are picking and ripping apart movies and finding, in some cases, there's some truth. In a lot of cases, there's not. Finding stuff that isn't there because they want to feel different and excluded. And they want to look for difference. Differences in colors of skin. Differences in whether we should appreciate fat people or not. Which we should also appreciate health, but we should also not just hate people for bad decisions that they've made or possibly genetic ones. Okay? We're looking at difference. Difference will not create balance and harmony. Difference will not make you happy. <laughs> looking for what we share. We both breathe oxygen. Most of us have ten fingers and ten toes. <laughs> a lot of us enjoy the same entertainment. I could choose to be a friend with someone and they might have a certain characteristic I don't like. And I can blow that all out of proportion and create a war, create problems, mostly for myself, in my mind and in my heart that prevent me from being happy. Or, instead of worshipping discontent, I can worship and appreciate the good stuff. This person drove all the way over here to get to my house. I wouldn't have even been able to see them if it wasn't for that. That's pretty cool. This person, out of all the people that they could have hung out with, regardless of the traits that they exhibited that they didn't enjoy, they chose to share those traits with me. That's pretty fucking cool. And we have this, 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 and this in common. We share this video game or whatever. We don't share that movie taste. So we don't do that movie. People have this, like, illusion that we all need to conform, that we all need to fit in, that we all need to part, be part of the same unit. But we're all already part of the same unit, this ever-expanding story of life. If you want to be happy, you're going to have to appreciate what you have in similarity. And when things aren't ready to be at their pinnacle, 
and st- like evolved. You know, we're, we're we're all moving in a straight forward line, and we're ready for the next page. Imagine how long evolution for a lot of things on this planet took place. So, what's the difference in your personal human relationships? It might take some time. Anyway, I don't want this video to be hours long. But I thought I'd give you some ideas, and I was originally going to turn this into a book concept. I just decided to make a ramp video today about it. Because I'm in a really great place, and I wish that other people could be more often. But, like my neighbor looking at this necklace, that's all they need to see. And them coming from a Christian background, but not acting Christian or following any of their rules at all, which is neither here nor there. This is a reason for them to hate me. How do you even know I'm pagan? This might be my grandfather's, you don't know. But because I wear a star on my neck. And it could potentially mean the opposite of what you believe. We're going to spit some hate. What is that going to do? You're looking at the differences again, you see. Not the similarities. We're both spiritual people. That's intelligent. We both found something that works for us. That's intelligent. We both are trying to better our lives. With the aid of some storybook, fable, deity, religion, or what have you. Those are the realities equally the same. And they're similar. Instead of what's different. Notice the difference in perspective. So the neighbor can create war. They can be discontent all the time. They can hate. They can scream. They can yell. You can see some of these clips if I've uploaded them. Um, Horrible, nasty things. Actually, I didn't upload it. But... Does it make them happier? Does it make their side of the argument more right? Or does it actually make them more wrong? And does it hurt me that they're yelling and calling me names when at the end of the day I'm back in my room? Or does it hurt them that they had to look for things to continue to encourage and rehearse, to mantra, to repeat all the things that brought them no joy? They seeked and therefore found unhappiness. This is the message I'm giving to you. If you do not like what's on, change the channel. We are the sum of the many stories we tell ourselves. What we do on a daily basis defines us. This is how to be happy. Drugs may or may not help you. Pay attention to what they do to the body. We're capping right here so that we can end this video. Drugs may or may not help you. Sleep is very important to moderate. Your diet is very important to moderate. Abstaining from anything is bad. Because you're going to crave it, you're going to want it more. This is why priests molest little boys. By abstaining from sex, they create a stronger, unsatiated urge. Moderation is the key to anything. Sugar. You can have a bit of sugar and it'd be fine. You overdo sugar, diabetes. Tune into what you'd like. Love your neighbor. Fucking psycho bitch. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and I do. See, because to me, Satan, which, well, not even to me, by definition, the word means oppose. Opposition is very important. You can't know yourself without it. You can't know what you're against and what you are without something to be against it. If everything, uh, to quote Vampire in Brooklyn, if every day's a sunny day, what's a sunny day? Evil and good, they walk hand in hand, say with me, evil is good, uh huh. Mm. So, you know, you gotta decide what you listen to at the end of the day. And I hope you enjoyed this rant. I hope, uh, hope it enlightens, for lack of a better word, a few of you to seek more of what you do enjoy, to tune out the nonsense, fuck the Facebook, fuck the news. You get the general idea of what's going on in the world without subscribing constantly. And there are ways of, to try to play on your addiction that these geniuses will use on you. And you can look forward to School for Evil to teach you about some of that kind of stuff. Kevin's School for Evil. Kevin's Portal.com. But I'd like... Judgment is a crazy thing. I'd like to see a world one day where... The judgment that we cast isn't so much judgment against others so much as it is judgment for what works best for us or against us. Judgment should be what brings us success or failure. And I'll end here saying, 
don't compare your success. This is something else I used to tell people in grade school. I used to be a lot more philosophical. Because people listen when we were young, man. Poetry was awesome then. And then you grow up and nobody wants to listen anymore. But, <laughs> but uh, don't judge your success compared to other people's success either. That's another thing that will make you very unhappy. How to be happy is to judge your success based off of your own past failures. If I type 100 words a minute and... Two months ago, I typed 90 words a minute. That's not a lot more, but I'm better. Meanwhile, Steve types 135 words a minute. That's pretty impressive, buddy. But Steve isn't me. Steve doesn't have my brain chemistry, my challenges. You know, and, and really, it doesn't matter what Steve can do because Steve ain't here running my life for me. I get to work on myself, and maybe I'll improve, maybe not. But we all, by minor increments, move an inch along into success, if that's what we're focused on. But if we're focusing again on the difference and to the similarities, we're both fascinated with computers. We're both excellent typers. We're both applying ourselves in the workplace or what have you. This is the secret. This is the secret to happiness, and this is why I can make so many dark, humorous things, and none of it really matter, and I can seemingly contradict myself from video to video or post to post, because it is all just fun. A bunch of other people are going to get triggered, because they haven't figured this stuff out yet, despite the same guy talking that confused them, has already made tutorials on half of this stuff. <laughs> There's a way out. Love yourself first. Love yourself. You make a great you. Remember that Yunus we talked about? <laughs> which is also a name, which is fun, Eunice. <laughs> but remember that, Eunice. And then it'll all be fine. At the end of the day, you're your jailer. And you need to tune that radio. So I'm Kevin Chaos, the autistic wizard. Kevinsportal.com. Much love be upon you. Peace be with those who wish peace for others. And I'll see you around.